Hey guys, so um, math time. Um, yesterday you um, worked on multiplying by threes. You have those flashcards from before the break. Um, you didn't have any flashcards in your packets this week. I forgot about them. So next week we'll be starting on multiples of four. Guys, make sure you are practicing with your flashcards. If you do not have flashcards, let me know and I can set out an extra set. Oh, for you, um, guys, you're, you need to know your multiplication facts as we're starting to multiply a two digit number by a one digit number. We cannot be drawing groups because it'll take us a lot longer. So please make sure you are practicing your facts. Um, so we're going to kind of review what we were working on before break before we go into what we're going to do this week. So one of the things we talked about was commutative property. And community property is when factors can be multiplied in any order and the product will remain the same. So let's look at some of these words. So factors. I want you to think about what does fact, what are factors? Okay, so factors are what you're multiplying. So three times five. Three and five are your factors. Okay, so factors are what we're multiplying. Three and five are our factors. Two, um, factors can be multiplied in any order and the product will remain the same. So the product is what you get when you multiply three times five. So I'm gonna draw a model for three times five to find our factor. Our product and I'm going to use a number line. Okay, so here's my number line. Okay, and the three is telling us how many groups and the five is telling us what is in each group. Okay, so um, on our number line, we're going to be counting by fives. Okay, and we're doing jumps. Of, we're doing three jumps. Okay, so I'm going to start at zero, and I'm going to jump five. So here's five. I'm going to do another jump, ten, and then I'm going to do another jump, fifteen. Okay, so my product three times five is fifteen. Okay, so these are my groups. And this is what I am, I have five in each group. Okay. So it's telling us that no matter what order our factors are in, I will get the same product. So let's see if that's correct. So if I change the order, now my product is going to stay the same. So I'm not going to mess with this. But my factors, three and five, I'm going to change the order. And I'm going to say five times three. And they're saying that that's gonna be 15. So I'm gonna draw a model to see if that is correct. So I'm gonna have five groups. So one, two, three, four, five. And I'm gonna have three in each group. One, two, three, one, two, Three, one, two, three, one, two, three, one, two, three. Now, if I add all of those up, I should get a product of 15. So I have three plus three is six, six plus three is nine, nine plus three is 12, and 12 plus three is 15. So that is correct. No matter the order my factors are in, um, I will still get 15. Okay, so if I have two times um, one, it's two. And if I have one times two, it's two. Okay, so that is commutative property. Factors can be multiplied in any order and the product will remain the same. Okay, and then I have associative property. And this is saying that factors can be grouped in any order and the product will remain the same. 
So it's kind of like our community property. So I have my factors. And we said product. So our factors are what we're multiplying. And our product is what we get when we multiply them. Okay, so let's look at this one. So if I have... Um, if I have, let's say, two... times six times three, okay? And so I'm gonna draw a picture that that means that I'm gonna start, I'm gonna start with what's in the parentheses, okay? So I have two groups of six. Actually, no, I'm gonna start with what's outside of the parentheses. So I'm gonna make three groups. So I have one, two, three. And then inside the groups, I'm going to have two groups. And then inside those two groups, I'm going to put six. One, two, three, four, five, six. Okay, and so let's try to figure out my product for this. So I know that, let's look at this first group. I have two groups with six in them. So I know that six plus six is 12. So I have 12 in this group. I have 12 in this group. And I have 12 in this group. Okay, so 12 plus 12 is 24 plus 12 is 36. So my product is 36. Okay, now this is telling me that no matter the way I group them, my product will be the same. So if I change the order of the group. So now I'm going to say I have two times six groups of three and they're saying that that's going to come out to 36 okay so i'm going to do an array for this so i'm going to have two arrays or area models here's one here's one i need two of them and in each one of these i'm going to have six rows of three so one two three four five six one Three. Okay, let's start over here. One, two, three, four, five, six, and then this. Okay. So here's my two groups, and each group has six rows of three. So over here, I have three plus three is six, plus three is nine, plus three is twelve plus three is 15, plus three is 18. So I have 18 over here and 18 over here, and that makes 36, okay? So associative property factors can be grouped in any order and the product will remain the same, okay? So both of these guys, I have these same factors, I have the same products. They're, the factors are just in a different order um, I still get the same product, and my models are different. That is also something you have to look at. The models are different, okay? And then the last one we talked about was um, area. And this is where we started adding two digits. We multiply two digit by one digit. So it's a two times, it's multiplying a two digit by a one digit number. So for instance, if I wanted to take 32 times four, okay? So what this means is I have four groups of 32. Now, I know you're probably saying, well, Miss Santa, we usually have the groups first, but when we're multiplying a two digit number by a one digit number, the two digit number has to come first, okay? So this is four groups of 32. Now, what we're gonna do is we're gonna break apart 
the number 32. Okay. And so guys, when I break apart this number into tens and ones, what do I have? Why don't you think about that? When I break this number apart into tens and ones, what do I have? Okay, I have 30 and two. Okay, so when we do our area, when we do our array, I'm gonna be using 10 blocks and one cubes. So I need three 10 blocks. So one, two, three. And I need two ones. One, two. Now I have four, four groups. So I need four. So here's one, two, three, and four. Okay, so over here, if I look at my tens and ones, this over here is showing me that I have four groups of 30, because each group has 30, 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30, 10, 20, 30. And this show, my ones has four groups of two, because I have two in each group. Okay, so I'm gonna, I'm breaking this up into tens and ones. Okay, here's my tens, here's my ones. This is gonna be four times 30. This is going to be four times two, okay? So guys, all I'm doing, it's just like if I was going to do um, what we've been, you know, using the models in equal groups. So four times 30, I'm only going to count what's in the tens place. So I have, this is 30, this is 30, this is 30, this is 30. So if I wanted to add all those up, I have three plus three is six, plus six, six plus nine, or six plus three is nine, nine plus three is 12. So I have 120 over here, okay? So my product for my tens place is 120. Now I'm gonna go count my ones. And guys, we can count by twos. Two, four, six, eight. Four times two is eight. So my product for my ones place is eight. And then guys, I'm gonna add these together. So 120 plus eight equals 128. Okay, guys, since we have not, um, we're just now learning multiplication, we are still working on our multiplication facts. This is how we are learning how to multiply a two digit by a one digit, okay? Um, next week, I'm gonna show you how to multiply a two digit number by a one digit number where you don't draw pictures. But in order to not have to draw a picture, guys, or to draw a model, you have to know your multiplication facts to make it go a little bit faster, okay? So today we are actually going to do what is called area models. Area models, guys, are just like arrays. They almost like arrays. Um, they're just, they look a little different. We're still using um, base 10 blocks. We're still using 10 longs and one. So I'm gonna actually show you how we do that in our this next part of our video, okay?